For this section of the course, we're working with grids and modularity, and those are two tools that we use often to create organization, structure, and unity in our design work. So for the first part of this assignment, you're going to be really exploring how color can impact grids and modularity. So this one is a little bit more about modularity than it is about grid, but it's about how color can break a grid and how we can use a modular system to create a variety of different outcomes. So here I have the Adobe Illustrator template open. This is provided for you on the learning management system. And you'll see that there are four pages or artboards here. Each one has nine black squares within a compositional boundary. But the nine squares are actually made up of another nine squares. And those are what we're going to be working with and changing their color to create different relationships between these modules on this grid. So first up is I'm going to do a save as. And that'll let us get started. So what we're really looking to do is change the colors of these squares. So obviously you can select them and you can come in and just change the color in the color picker. It's a totally acceptable way to do this assignment. And it doesn't really matter what colors you choose. You want to make sure you use a variety between all of your compositions. You don't want all of them to use the same colors. They should all be unique. Also avoid using black. You can use grays or things like that, but it's better if you don't use the color that's already in the file. But there's a couple other things you might want to think about as you're using color for this particular project. One is that the swatches palette can be really useful. It comes preloaded with all these colors and I'd recommend not using these. So I'm going to come in here and do select all unused and I'm going to delete those. That way they're gone. But what we can do is we can create swatches, which will make this assignment go a little bit more quickly. So maybe this green color is one I plan on using again. So I have it selected. I'm going to press this plus to create a new swatch and I get some information about that swatch. Here you can tweak the color if you wanted to. I don't know that I really want to do that here. But one thing that's useful is making sure that this global color is checked. This is a really interesting tool in Illustrator that's good to know about because this really will make changing colors really easy in this file. So I'm going to click OK. And then maybe I come over here and I make some of the other ones green. So now I can click over on the swatches palette, make some of the other ones green as well. But what's powerful about that global color command is I can double click on this now to change the color. And you'll notice that when I change it, all of the other ones change together. And that's because I had this selected and all of these are tagged with that same swatch. So that can be a fun thing. You don't have to use it on this assignment, but if you're using it, it can make it really easy to change the color palette really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel because I like the color I had before. Another thing that can be useful here is using the eyedropper tool. So if I have a black square selected and I go to the eyedropper tool, I can pick one of these other colors and it will change it to that color. And then if I hold down option, it'll toggle back and forth between the full eyedropper and the empty eyedropper. And since that was the last color I used, if I put it on the full one, I can hold down option and I can actually click around and just fill these squares with that same color. So maybe now I want to try that with a different one. I can click on a different swatch, get back on that eyedropper, and then now I have this and I can go ahead and hold option and fill in that other color. So that can be a nice way to do that because chances are you're going to want to utilize a color obviously more than once in one of these compositions. But the goal of this really is to explore how you can connect and disconnect this grid through these modules. So you want to play with things like this where you make the color go across some of these gaps where they start to connect, where it actually bridges that gap and actually connects parts of this together. You can also play with disconnecting it by purposefully keeping the modules separate. You could also play with making pixel art too. Maybe you want to make some image here by coloring in certain areas and making a sun or a beach or a moon or something like that. You'll see some of those examples in the module. But that's really what you're after here. You're really looking at how color can bridge these gaps, can create unity between the modules or even potentially disconnect the modules. That's really the goal of this project. But again, all of these need to be different. So take different approaches on each one. Each of them need to have different colors and you'll need to complete four in total. So I'm obviously not done, but let's pretend I am. Then I would come up here and do a file, save as to create that PDF 
which I would ultimately use to upload to the learning management system for grading. I want to make sure all is on since I have multiple artboards. So I'll click save and that'll create a file that's ready to go for grading. As always, your instructor's available to you. Please shoot them an email if you have any questions at all. And I hope you enjoy working with color and modularity to see how you can create these different connected and disconnected solutions.